Howdy, me Phil Bart here, and welcome back. Now, this is a video that's dedicated to the people who have purchased my simple multiplayer uh, template. And once you've got it open, the first thing that I want to cover is something very simple, and that's improving the look of our main menu. And yeah, I really encourage you to go back and watch the uh, the previous video to this one. And again, to show you, once you hit play. You're going to have a really simple menu. You're not going to have a whole lot of options there. And, well, you want to add a little bit of spice to it. And let we'll this go ahead and load up. And now, with that menu, it's plain, it's clean, it's simple, it works. But you kind of want to make it look a little nicer. So, in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in a background to this section right here and I'm going to add some background music just to make it a little bit nicer a little bit more engaging when people first log into it so with that now we've got our basic file structure already set up here UI and in the UI assets folder you've got audio and you've got images now I've already included the Technoax logo if you're not familiar with Technoax then I definitely recommend you check out his website royalty free music and royalty free music and honestly the guy's good he's really good so I'm gonna to come to the widgets folder and since I've already included that image and that's because all the music that I use comes from him anyway I'm gonna to go to the widgets folder and I'm going to double click on the main menu underscore W that's gonna open up the widget editor and you can see this is this is what we got to work with. Now, I'm pretty much strictly going to work in the designer tab. Now, I've already added a simple background, and it's just right here, background. There's nothing there. It's just a, a black image. Um, that's fine. One of the first things I want to do is you have your Z order. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that negative five, not 58, but negative five. Now it'll always be behind everything else not a problem okay now I want to bring in that Technoax logo first thing I'm gonna drag this down here and then put it up here so I can actually go between the two tabs now I'm going to come over here and grab an image left click drag it into the the scene and you can leave it however you want for right now but what I wanted to do is come back over here go to my images folder and I'm going to left click on that so that it is highlighted come back in here and now whenever you go to your brush click to expand that in the image section you've got an arrow here click that arrow and it's going to go ahead and put that image directly into the scene for you now I'm going to use the mouse wheel to kind of scroll in a little bit and I'm just going to drop this image down it doesn't matter if the image size overlaps because there is transparency on it. So I'm just going to drag this over here to the bottom right hand corner and then we're going to select anchors and say bottom right. If you're not familiar with the anchors tool, we'll let you go full screen, anchor to the right, anchor to the middle, anchor to the left, bottom, you know, and, and lets you anchor to certain locations. So it doesn't really matter what the actual screen resolution ends up being this will always be in the bottom right hand corner this will always be on the far left hand side this will always be top right this will always be in the center it'll always work out that way even if everything else changes so the next thing I want to do is let's create a background so I'm gonna go ahead and grab another image I'm gonna stick it in right here and for right now I'm gonna expand this out and I'm not gonna make it the full size that I need but you notice that it's overlapping on top of other stuff so I'm going to take this, click on my Z order, and I'm going to select negative 3. We already made negative 5 for the other one. And now it's going to place it in behind those things. Now, this right here isn't showing up very well because it's white on white on white. So let's go ahead and get an image for that. Now, I don't already have an image that I want to put in there just yet. So what I'm going to do is you can either use the import or you can drag and drop. There's other ways you can do it, but I'm going to select the import and I'm going to grab 
something out of my hard drive. You know, I'm not exactly sure where I put this file, so it'll take me a second to go ahead and find it. I'm being truly organized, huh? Um, but you can scroll around, and I've got all kind of different things that um, I've already pre-made. And if you want to use whatever you want to use, this one will be fine for now. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one and click Import. And we're going to save all. We're going to leave it selected. Come back over here, and then we already have this image selected. We're going to come over here to the brush and click right there. And now, since I've selected this as being negative 3, you've got this red borderline that's right here. Its Z order is 0, so it's not really going to be affected by this much. This will end up going behind it. So I'm just going to stretch this over just to where it goes underneath that red bar. And then I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out so that it goes just a hair off the bottom of the screen and just a hair off to the right hand side. And I'm going to go ahead and anchor this to, well, we'll anchor this to full screen. Even though it's not covering this part over right over here, it may be problematic later down the line if you're changing your screen resolution or whatnot, but it's fine for now. Um, doesn't really show up this logo very well, but it's all right. It's there. Everything else will still work. And as you see, the image went underneath that red bar, so that'll work out. I'm going to go ahead and hit Compile and Save. Close this window down. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to play it again so we can take a look at it. Again, it takes a couple seconds to load up this way. This is primarily only when you really want to test it to do anything with the multiplayer functionality of it. If you're just testing a map, you can just test it in the standard viewport. Alright, so there we go. We got our background. We still see our Steam information. Everything's good to go there. And that's good. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and get set up for doing the background music. And pardon all that. But now we need to find some music. So I'm going to go to the audio folder and I'm going to go ahead and click import and then again I want to navigate to my hard drive and I want to go to where I have my music located. In this case I've got some sample stuff that I've already made. Now the one thing you'll have to know that you're going to need to use WAV files as your primary audio source. You see that you got some different options here. I mean MP3, MP4 and all this other stuff I use WAV files because it's easier to implement. So click open, it'll import, and there we go. Hit save all. Now to get this to work, you can click on the preview here and then stop it there. You can click on to have it selected, but you notice you know this is our main menu map there's nothing here then you don't want anything here so what I want to do is to be able to get that music to play in the background where it will only be in that background whenever you're in the main menu I'm going to come to blueprints come down to open level blueprints and ignore what we got right here we're just going to drag this out of the way and I've showed how to do this in other videos but Again, it's super simple and easy to follow. I'm going to drag off from this pin now with a left click, and then I'm going to start typing in sequence and grab this sequence here, and I'm going to bring it back over to here. And then I'm going to drag off from then one, and I'm going to say play sound at location. The location doesn't really matter all that much. And if you want, you can go ahead and drag these guys back over there. So now the sound that we want to play is the one that we already had highlighted, which was the, the song that we just uploaded. Now another thing that I like to do is go ahead and come down here and volume multiplier. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 0.5. That's going to be at half volume now. I'm going to drag this down for just a moment here because 
we want this to continually loop and play even if the the song ends you want it to start again so I'm going to drag off of here and I'm going to add a, a delay now with that delay node we need to know how long this song actually plays for so if you mouse over the audio file itself duration is 97.933 for this song so I'm gonna say for my delay is 98 seconds you always want it just a hair longer alright so at 98 seconds we're gonna drag off from the completed back to the beginning here of the play sound at location so it's gonna start playing the song 98 seconds later it's gonna end and loop back and then start playing again and we're gonna hit compile and save and close and we can go back in here and try it one more again now we don't necessarily need to worry about the steam connectivity and I'll show you what happens if you're not connected to steam or if you just run a standard viewport for this it'll tell you go connect to steam dummy and you'll have a white image right here from where your steam avatar would be but now we have background music and we have a simple background you can do the same thing and add another background for here if you wanted to. So, you know, click exit game or you can hit the escape key. Now, I have already included with this the click to sound. And I use that for all of my buttons. So that whenever you click a button, it actually makes noise. Some people like it, some people don't like it. But keep in mind when you're working on a project being neat being organized is key because later down the line when you start having a lot of things in your project then oh god where did I put that if you use a little bit of common logic ahead of time like I'm working on the UI which stands for user interface and I'm looking for the music that goes to it well the music is an asset and it's an audio file so I can go right here and this is where my audio goes for my assets for the user interface same thing with the images you, you're going to end up with having sounds in probably three or four different locations however think about where they're going to be easiest to find for you later down the line when you want to add more or replace them game modes now right now I have the main menu game mode and third person game mode as I'm developing other game modes for different types of, of play I'm going to go ahead and add them in there as well. And we'll cover the rest of this later. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in the last video was that I had already created the Red Man, and you have your player base. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is I'm going to double click on player underscore base. This is your character. This replaces the third person character. If you look in your viewport, here's your Red Man. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on mesh click on the skeletal mesh here and I'm going to select SK mannequin this is going to take it back to the original default mannequin from Unreal Engine 4 and I'm going to hit compile and save and I'm drag this down and put it back up here because now whenever I want to work on it I want it to be there so now I want to create that red player again but I also want to create a blue player so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on player underscore base I'm going to select create child blueprint class and I'm going to call this red man underscore BP the underscore BP tells me that it is a blueprint okay I'm going to go into red man underscore BP select the mesh select the skeletal mesh select red man and compile and save since they're all working off the same animation it's not going to be a problem now this guy is already good to go I'm going to drag him down drag him back over here then I'm going to get rid of it let's go ahead and create blue man and then we'll call it a end on this video and I'll show you how to switch between these guys and then in the next video I'll actually create a character selection menu that should be fun lovely so I'm going to go ahead and right click create on player underscore base and then I'm going to select create child blueprint class we're gonna call this blue man underscore BP and now we've got the red man so we can make this easy and make a copy of this so we're gonna click back on the characters folder 
I'm going to right click in here and create a new folder. We're going to call this Blue Man. Simple enough, right? Now, to make this easy, I'm going to go ahead and select and first off, I'm going to rename these guys after I do this, but I'm going to left click on this one, shift left click here so that I select all of them. Left click, drag and drop to Blue Man folder and copy here. Now that I've copied them there, I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I'm going to select it, hit F2 key, and we're going to call this Red Man Body. And let's go ahead and, and make a correction to that and add underscore. And this is actually just a um, texture. Or is it a material? It is a material. So if it was a texture, we leave it as a underscore T. But since this is a material, we're going to do underscore M. So we know at first glance, if we're looking at the files from outside the editor, we know that that's going to be a material. So I'm going to do the same thing, F2, and we're going to call this red man underscore logo underscore M for material. So these guys are good to go. You see I renamed my my red man underscore SK. SK is for skeletal mesh. I usually use like ST for static mesh. So let's go into the blue man folder and let's go ahead and click on you redman underscore sk and we're going to hit f2 and call this blue man underscore sm for skeletal mesh f2 on you call this blue man logo underscore m yes it's still red we'll fix that next Go ahead and rename this one. Again, um, just trying to be organized. So I'm going to go ahead and go into blue man underscore body. Now, you can scroll out, scroll over. I didn't make this. This is just copying from the SK mannequin. It's kind of messy looking, but you can ignore everything else for right now. And we want to select body color. We want to select right here. Now, one of the things I'm going to do really quickly is the old color is fine. I'm going to drag it in here and drop it up there. Now, it's a saved color. I can reuse that color anytime I want. But since we're making Blue Man, I'm going to click over here in the blue, find a color of blue that I like. That looks lovely. Not really, but it'll be good enough for now. And I'm going to go ahead and drag it up here and click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply and save. And now we've changed the body material over to where it'll show up as blue. So we'll hit save on that. Now you can just hit save. It'll it'll save it and do the the application as well. Just showing options here. So now I want to go into blue man logo. Since we saved our color, all we have to do is select this right here. Select that hit OK, hit save, and exit. And that is done. Now all we have to do is double click on our Blue Man Skeletal Mesh, come to right here, Blue Man Body, and you can see the logo stays red, so we change that as well to Blue Man Logo. And we now have a Blue Man. So, we go back into our Blueprints and go into our Blue Man underscore BP open that up, click on your mesh, and change it to Blue Man. Compile and save. And now you have three characters. You can choose to be player base, which is going to be the white character, or you can choose to go ahead and create a separate white one as well, and maybe a green one, and a purple one, and a pink one. But to get started with, we have the player base, and then we have Red Man and Blue Man. Now, I'm going to actually go into the maps folder and here we have the main menu map and the lobby map I'm going to double click on lobby map to actually load the lobby map itself you see there's four network start points and you see that um, everything is kind of organized into different folders here 
and to stay organized. The sky sphere, to me, that's part of lighting. So I'm going to left click and drag it on top of the lighting folder, and it's going to hide it inside that folder. Now I'm going to come up here to lobby map, right click, create folder, and I'm going to create a folder called start point. Left click here, shift left click there, and drag all four of those into there, and minimize it. Now we have a clean slate to work with in our world outliner. So click save all, good to go. Now if we were to hit play now we can just run around and we're in this nice plain clean empty map but if you want to quickly change over you can go to world settings and we're in a third person game mode so click on this to expand it out we can go from player underscore base we can change to blue man BP then hit play and now we're the blue man same thing if you want to go to the red man you can select red man and play and quickly change between them but I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on player underscore base to leave it to where we can do something in the next video all right well I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I hit save all it's gonna save the game mode back again save current even though we didn't really have any changes in that. And I'm going to leave it at this for this video. And if you have any questions on it, then let me know. But here's the thing also is this is all part of my simple multiplayer platform. And again, this is for sale. It is $10. If you just want to purchase this as a standalone by itself, it's $10. And I can accept PayPal for that. If you want to join the Patreon version, you can... You can buy the actual unit itself for the $10, and for an additional $5 a month on Patreon, you can join a special part of my Discord uh, channel that allows you direct access to me and to my team members to ask us questions on how to fix things and do things, and if we don't know the answers to it, we'll get you in the right direction. Um, if you wanted to do the next level up, there will be several levels you can get for that package, and that'll be explained more in those Discord channels and in the um, the Patreon page of what all you get. So I do thank you for, for watching the video, and if you chose to, to purchase it, I thank you for that. If you would like to purchase it, again, you can go ahead and contact me in my Discord channel, and we'll get you set up on, on getting it. We'll get the download link to you, and we'll get you rolling. All right. Thanks, and have a good one.